Hey, this is a Family Summit recap video. So if you missed the Family Summit, I'm gonna try to summarize it for you here really briefly. And if you were at the Family Summit but you've already forgot everything, this is also for you. Two quick points though, if the lighting changes, I'm sorry, it's just really cloudy here and the, the sun is constantly getting more intense and less intense. So uh, that's one. Number two, I'm really sweaty right now because we don't have AC in our house. So please ignore my glistening face. All right, let's get into it. So the handout, the packet, is gonna be broken up into four parts. The first part explores what is God's will for every human being and what is God's will or mission for his disciples disciples of Jesus. That would be you and me. Number two, what is God's will? What is his mission for you as an individual, as a family, as a unique group of people living in Olivet, Charlotte, Marshall, Bellevue, Maple Valley, etc. And then the third part is going to explore what does it look like to live out the unique mission that God has given you on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. How do you structure your life in a way that acknowledges that God has given you a mission and then using that mission to make decisions on should we buy a new home? Where should we put our kids in school? Where should I go to college? What kind of job should I get? These are all questions, significant questions, that we all have to make on, on a regular basis. And if we don't have a mission, then we can never evaluate why to choose what we're going to choose. So I'm going to begin by way of a metaphor that I think will help bring a little bit of clarity to what I'm talking about. So unfortunately for me, I'm very bad at basketball, but it's the analogy that I think fits well enough. We all know basketball. We've all seen the game played. So I would claim, and you might disagree with me, but I'm going to claim that the primary purpose, the mission of basketball, is to be an enjoyable game. Whether you're spectating, or you're refing, or you're playing, basketball is supposed to be enjoyable. It's a recreational sport. It, what, it's not something that you have to do. It's not something that someone requires you to do. So its purpose is to be enjoyed. And even if you're being paid to play basketball, like LeBron James, and you're the best there is, arguably, at the moment, and uh, you, you play, if you, if you don't enjoy the game you're playing, you're, you're really doing it wrong, no matter how skilled you are. So that's the main purpose of basketball. Okay? If you zoom in, if you are a participant in the game of basketball, then your purpose is to put an orange ball through a 10-foot hoop. Get it? So if you're playing the game of basketball, yes, you're supposed to enjoy it, but you're also supposed to put an orange ball through a 10-foot hoop. Okay, let's come over here to the, the spiritual side. Um, if you're a human being, you are made in the image of God to be his ruler and authority on earth. He delegates authority to you to represent him in this world, to live with him under his wisdom and his authority, but also to rule the world that he's given you. We see this in Genesis 2 and 3, right? God makes Adam, whose name means humankind, and he makes Eve, whose name is life, just kind of a cool fun fact for you. And the, the, he puts them in the garden, a place that he provides for them, a place that with easy work, full of trees and food. And he says, take care of this garden, take care of the animals in here, name the animals, and work together, right? So a humankind, Adam, and Eve, life, are living in the garden with God, learning from him, gaining from his wisdom and his instruction, and ruling on his behalf. But then obviously we know how that story ends and Adam and Eve sin. They take from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They decide good and evil for themselves rather than choosing to, to, to rely on and trust God's definition of good and evil. And that corrupts human nature. That corrupts the world we live in even to this day. So if we were to rewind a little bit, we can safely say that God created every human being for a relationship with him and to be his ruling authority on this planet to represent him to the world. Pretty, pretty neat, right? So whether, again, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, whether you're born in America or China, whether you're born in 2020 or you were born in 20 BC, that's your purpose. Next, God has a particular or a more specific purpose for his disciples. Right? It's God's desire that everyone would become a disciple of Jesus. And once you're a disciple, the, your purpose is a little more specific. Just like if you're a participant in the game of basketball, your goal is to get a ten, is an orange ball through a 10-foot hoop. When you become a Christian, your responsibility, your mission changes pretty drastically. Not only are you a representative of God to this world, a ruler on his behalf, 
But you're also a disciple of Jesus who obeys what Jesus taught, who models their life after Jesus' life, who uh, obeys his teachings, and then who takes his call seriously. Like the last thing that Jesus says to his disciples, according to Matthew, is all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. So if we were to summarize being a disciple, that's it. I mean, that's Jesus' message. It's obey me, because I have all authority, and go forth and tell other people to obey me, to become part of my kingdom. So, and then, uh, what is it? Teach them all I've commanded to. So teach those other people how to obey Jesus. So, okay, as a human being, your purpose is to be a ruler on God's behalf, his representative to the world, and to live according to his wisdom in relationship with him. Then as a disciple of Jesus, not only do you do that first thing, but you also do the more specific work of a disciple. You make disciples of all nations, you obey Jesus, you submit to his authority, and you worship him as king rather than yourself, right? That's kind of what sin is. It's choosing good and evil for ourselves, worshiping ourselves as king and queens, rather than worshiping Jesus as our ultimate king and authority and teacher. Okay, so now that we've established Really briefly, there's a lot more in there. There's actually more in the packet if you want to read it um, on the part one and two. We established what your purpose, your mission, the reason you've been put on this planet, we've established that. Now, all of that was obvious and clear if you've read through the whole Bible or even most of it. That's very, that's very clear. But how does that help you decide where to buy a house? How does that help you decide how to run your family? How does that help you decide what job to get or what college to go to? It's one thing to say that you're a disciple of Jesus. That's all good and well. But then what college does a disciple go to? You know, what school does a disciple enroll their child in? How does a disciple decide how many activities are too many activities to put my kid into? Or should I put Timmy in piano or put Jessica in cheerleading? How do you make these decisions that have very real consequences for your life? How do you steward your finances? How do you earn money? How do you give away money? These are questions that the Bible does address. But if we don't take time to think through them clearly in light of our mission, we're going to get it wrong. Let me, let me just take another metaphor. When I go backpacking, I'm a weirdo and I, I like backpacking, but you guys knew that. You knew I liked running, so I'm already a weirdo to most of you, but I like backpacking. And when you go backpacking, there's two purposes for backpacking. The first purpose is to enjoy your time. If it's miserable, I don't go backpacking. That's why I don't go camping in the winters. It's miserable. So my first purpose is to have fun and enjoy the trip. My second purpose is to get out of the woods alive. Because dying in the woods defeats the first purpose of having fun. So when I go to pack my bag to go hiking, I ask myself, is this going to help me enjoy the camping trip more? And is it going to help me get out of the woods? For example, I might take a sleeping bag, right? Novelty, I know. Because a sleeping bag is not only going to help me enjoy the trip more, because sleeping on the ground is not too much fun, so having a sleeping bag makes that a little bit better. Uh, but it also, if it gets cold, will keep me from dying. So the sleeping bag fulfills both purposes. Check, that's going in the bag. And remember, when you're hiking, you're taking every single thing and you're walking with it for miles. So you don't pack anything that you don't need for those purposes. Because anything that you pack that is wasted space in your backpack is just gonna slow you down. It's similar to that, back, to that uh, basketball illustration, right? You don't go to play basketball in snow boots because snow boots are gonna make you worse at your purpose, which is putting an orange ball through a 10-foot hoop. You would never do anything that would make you worse at putting the orange ball through the 10-foot hoop because it defeats the purpose of the sport. And you wouldn't do anything that would make you more miserable, right? Snow boots are gonna give you a lot of blisters when you're playing basketball. So they defeat the other purpose, which is to enjoy the game. So I hope you kind of can see the connection. You can't decide what not to pack in your bag. You can't decide how not to play basketball unless you know what your purpose is before. Again, I'm gonna go back to the, ba the backpack. It would be really silly of me to pack a blender in my backpack. It's heavy, there's no electricity in the woods, shocker, and it's not gonna help me enjoy my time, and it's definitely not gonna help me survive in the woods. So I'm not gonna pack a blender. I'm not gonna pack a bunch of rocks in my bag. But unfortunately, we as Christians 
take a lot of blenders with us when we go hiking. When we try to run hard after Jesus and live our lives as individuals and as family teams together in pursuit of the mission that Jesus gave us to go forth and make disciples of all nations, teaching them in his ways and baptizing them, we take a lot of rocks and blenders. We take a lot of things that distract us from that purpose. We take a lot of things that make us worse at doing that and we add them to our bag. And so the hope that the hope of this whole thing, the hope of this whole um, family summit packet and the time that you're taking to even watch this video is for you to take time as a family from oldest to youngest as much as you can uh, or as an individual because when I say family in this video I mean individuals too to take the time to evaluate what you have put in your bag, to evaluate am I serving the purpose that God has given me or am I mindlessly taking things that the culture tells me to do because that's how I evaluate what is helpful. So in exercise one, I want you to take some time to reiterate, to say in your own words, what you believe the purpose of humankind is. And then I want you to write down what the purpose of a disciple is. So I, I went through that, but I want you to do it in your own words as a family. Then I would like you to write down what your family's purpose is. I've given you an example. But if you never evaluate what your family's purpose is, then you can never evaluate what is the right thing to do for your family. And you end up just going along with whatever our culture or your family or your traditions tell you to do. So that's an important first step. So to do exercise one, pause the video right now, or do this tonight with your family, and just write down what you think the mission of humans, the mission of disciples, and then what your family's mission on this planet is. Now in the second part, exercise two, I want you to go through and decide what makes your family unique. What makes your family different from other families? And how can you use those unique skills, abilities, resources, and opportunities to serve the main purpose? So let me, let me go back to the basketball metaphor. So when you're playing basketball, you have to decide how you as an individual best put the orange ball through the 10 foot hoop. So if you're small, well, you're, you're medium height. If you're small, there's no hope, trust me. If you're medium height and you're agile and you're fast and you can pass really intelligently and you know plays, you're probably gonna be a point guard. If you're big, strong, tall, unlike me, then you're gonna play in the post. Each basketball player must decide how he or she best fits into the team and uses his or her unique abilities to get the orange ball through the 10 foot hoop so that you can enjoy the game of basketball. Does that make sense? So all these purposes are building on each other. So when you zoom in, every small decision should serve the larger mission. So every time I play basketball, I play to win because winning is fun. And I win best when I use the skills and abilities that I have uniquely as a basketball player to win the game of basketball, to put the orange ball through the 10 foot hoop so I can have fun and enjoy the game of basketball. Because winning is fun. <laughs> now, you can always do those in ways that detract from the fun, but that's where the metaphor breaks down. So, as a Christian, as a family of Christians, as a family of disciples of Jesus Christ, your mission is to represent God to this world, to be his hands and his feet, and to rule on his behalf as a human. Number two, your purpose as a disciple, as a family of disciples of Jesus, your purpose is to obey what he taught, to model your life after his life and the principles that he showed us, and to go and make other disciples baptizing and teaching in the name of Jesus. Then you have to decide how you as a family uniquely fulfill that purpose. And that's what exercise two is going to help you understand. It's going to help you ask some questions about yourself, about your family, that what makes you unique as a family? What makes you special? What makes you different than other families? And now you have to leverage those abilities, those uniquenesses, those opportunities to serve your purpose, to glorify God, to work alongside him, and to be a disciple of Jesus. So if your family is really sporty and you're, you're coaching in the community and your son and your daughter and your wife or that's me speaking from a male perspective, right? But whatever you're doing, if you're a sporty family, you're serving the community in that way. So leverage your passion and your ability and your opportunity in the sports community to make disciples.
If you're a really artistic family and you are uh, musically inclined and you're in the band circle and you're in the choir circles, use that unique opportunity and those unique abilities to minister to other people, to build disciples, to build relationships, to glorify God in that way, and then make decisions for your family based on that. So you know what your purpose is as a Christian. I've repeated it a couple times. And you know that you have a, the ability to make beautiful music. So when you have to decide on how you're going to spend your money or your time, remember that you guys are good at music and you have this opportunity to serve God in this unique way. So when you decide, uh, should we put Timmy in soccer or should he spend more time on piano? Well, maybe, probably, he should spend more time playing piano because that's a gift that God has given him. Maybe your family's really passionate about food and cooking and being together around the table. That's something that God has given you. It's a tool and a resource and an opportunity to serve him, to serve that greater purpose, to make disciples and to glorify him. So when you sit down to plan out your budget as a family, maybe your budget for food is a little bit higher than mine would be because you value food as a way of connecting and loving other people, but also of worshiping God by just cooking good food in a, in a, with a creative gift that he has given you. Does that make sense? So I'm not trying to pigeonhole you. And there's a ton of examples within the document that I wrote up um, that give you ideas of what your family's good at and how those unique abilities can serve the greater purpose. Okay, I'm going to pause there. So I think I've summarized the first two parts of the document fairly well. Now the next two parts are going to help you figure out how, what that looks like what, when you live in community that way and what it looks like to do these things on a regular basis. What it looks like to live on mission every day, week, month, and year. I hope the exercise is helpful to you. If you have questions, if you think this is a little bit confusing, it probably is, so that's alright. Um, I would love to sit down with you and your family sometime. Um, if you want to come to the church and just have, you know, either I could walk one or two of you through the packet or I could sit down with your family and just walk you through the questions, that'd be really fun for me. And so I would love the opportunity to just like spend some time with you guys brainstorming about what makes your family so unique and gifted to serve in certain ways. Um, if you have questions that can be answered pretty quickly over email, happy to do that too, or phone conversation or text. Um, if you want extra help, then uh, yeah, just reach out. All right. I hope that's helpful. I hope to hear from you. And uh, in the meantime, leave in peace.